welcome back. You're still watching Business Incorporated on channels, television, over to the commodities market. Now, crude oil prices have receded after Brent hit $75 a barrel for the first time since April 2019, as investors remain bullish after a quick recovery in global oil demand and as concerns eased over an early return of Iranian crude. Brent crude futures for August climbed 26 cents. Uh, which is 0.4% to $75.16 a barrel, pairing earlier losses. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude for July was at $73.70 a barrel, up 0.1%. WTEI for August climbed 0.2% to $73.23 a barrel. BOFA Global Research raised its Brent crude price forecast for this year and next, saying that tighter oil supply and recovering demand could push oil briefly $100 a barrel in 2022. Well, what does this mean to the Nigerian economy? Lawrence Messi, research analyst with financial derivatives, bears his mind on this, on the show this afternoon. Hello, Lawrence. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Well, this morning, uh, Brent crossed $75 a barrel. Well, it has now tapered, but it's still on the rise. We understand that reopening of economies is driving this high, but how long do you see this, you know, still going on the rise? Thank you for having me and thank you for that question. We believe that the price is going to remain high significantly into maybe the first quarter of next year, especially as fiscal packages are being rolled out across the world economy. So until these fiscal um, programs and policies are reduced in order to focus more on inflation control, then we can expect that there would be lower demand for, uh, for oil, which might also cause the oil prices to stop their rally. However, the main cause for uh, the um, constant high prices and increasing prices of, the glo of global oil products is largely due to supply tightness being imposed by the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. As uh, we've seen, OPEC Plus, these are um, non-OPEC allies, have uh, contracted supply by 8 million barrels per day, which accounts for 8% of global oil supply. And OPEC itself still maintains its cuts at five point, above 5.5 million barrels per day. In total, this is about 13 13.5 million barrels per day in supply cuts, which is uh, largely significant when talking about price mechanics in the global oil market. So um, the benchmark uh, price rule suggests that any revenue accruing to the prices above the benchmark uh, should automatically go to the excess crude accounts. And the excess price is $35 per barrel above the 40 dollars benchmark. Yet, uh, in our excess crude, we have just about $700 million. What's, from your perspective, is hindering, you know, this following this rule that is supposed to be? The excess crude account is meant to be credited with revenue uh, from um, excess in all prices. So this revenue is actually determined by both the oil price and the production. So in the 2021 budget, um, oil production is pegged or is expected to be 1.8 million barrels per day. But in actuality, it's currently about 1.3 million barrels. So despite the fact that oil prices have risen from uh, the benchmark $40 to $75, the oil production levels are still a bit low. And so the total revenue, there is still a shortfall in revenue, So, which means we haven't even attained the main target for, for all revenues. And as such, there's actually no excess revenue to be deposited in the excess crude, crude account. So uh, there's actually been a lot of focus mainly on just the price, but not on the production itself of oil. And that's actually why the excess crude account has remained a bit um, stagnant at $72 billion. 72 million, sorry, across um, the year. However, it's also noteworthy to state that across uh, six years, uh, between now and 2015, there's been a significant decline in, uh, in the excess crude account from about $2.2 billion to what it is now, $72 million. Uh, this is highly attributable to also the same thing. All prices have fallen over the years. I think in the 2015 recession, when all prices went to about $30 per barrel. And as such, we've not been able to meet our revenue targets 
based on the budgets and that's and also looking at um election periods where there is some sort of fiscal laxity and increased withdrawals from the excess crude accounts mm. as well as in 2018 the um of the refurnishing of the Paris Club loan. So these uh, are highly these are things that account for the de the depletion of ECA and its continued stagnant state over time. All right, uh, Lawrence. Well, the, Ira the Iran nuclear deal was stalled. The talk was stalled over the weekend, but most likely it should be renewed maybe by next quarter. How much extra oil is Iran likely to supply to the market? On the Iran nuclear deal, uh, with Donald Trump, we joined uh, about two years ago and in reimposing his sanctions on Iran, that, that left Iran... Uh, economically damaged, basically, because they have sanctions on their oil exports. But the repercussions of this deal happening would mean that Iran would be able to pump in about 4 million barrels per day into the global oil market. So, so this is actually a supply shock. And what we expect this to cause is a downward trend on prices because there's increased supply into the oil market. And uh, the repercussions this would, have, this would have for the Nigerian economy would simply be reduction in revenues and also reduction in the amount of inflow into our external reserves as well. All right, Lawrence, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on uh, the price, oil price in the global world and how it's affecting Nigeria's revenue. Do enjoy the rest of your day.